to order the Board of Public Library District regular meeting of the Board of Trustees on Wednesday, November 16th at 7.15 p.m. And first thing we're going to do is a roll call. Trustee Lazan. Here. Trustee Warren. Present. Trustee Pika. Present. Trustee Stull. Here. Trustee Richardson. Here. Trustee DeRocher is here as a director Whitmer and assistant to the director Jack Davis and the fabulous other employees of the Board of Public Library District <laughs> that will be named by Jack. <laughs> 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 Even though I met you all, I still don't have your names. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right. We do need to take off the, uh, we're on to be approved the agenda, and we do not need the closed we'll session 19 and we're 20. Any other changes, Sandy? I don't know so. Could I have a motion? I move that we approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, the motion was made by Trustee Lazan and seconded by Trustee Pita. And uh, this is important. Yeah, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The agenda is approved. Oh my goodness. And really now we have the introduction of the new library staff. So very exciting. Very exciting day, Monday at the library. We have four new staff members who join us on Monday. <laughs> and they are still with us on day. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is more exciting. Anyway, so we're going to start. We'll go left to right here. So our first um, person going to introduce themselves is David. Hello. So I'm David Becerra. Um, I'm the new full-time graphic designer here at the library. Um, to give you a little background, I, I went to school for graphic design and freelance for many years. Um, before sort of like transitioning into libraries actually in like digital services and computer services um, and then I went on to adult services and then we can team services um, wow. I was the team services coordinator at the Bartlett Public Library previous to this so I'm excited to be here and sort of merging my skill sets uh, doing graphic design yeah we're so glad you're here <laughs> well thank you David so next up we have Lori Rex hello uh, I have been in the library world for 16 and a half years. Wow. I worked uh, at the McHenry Public Library prior to this. Most, uh, pretty much everything I've done has been in circulation and interlibrary law. Um, I also ran my own comic book store, so oh, I am oh, hoping to be able to, you know, get some <laughs> cool fandom things. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Lori. And then we have... De I'm going to call you Deborah. You can. She goes by Deborah or Debbie Andrew. Okay. So I graduated with my uh, Master of Library and Information Science degree in 2010 from Dominican University. And I've been working in the libraries ever since uh, in various capacities. I've worked as a government documents librarian. I've worked as a generalist. I've worked as a business librarian. And like David was saying, I'm Excited uh, to be here at Orangeville and merge my skills from for this new role as the Adult Services Librarian. Right. Well, well, thanks and welcome. welcome. And then last but not least, <laughs> Ian, Ian Stevens. Well, take it away. Well, hi there. Um, I've had a career in retail management and marketing, but the last six years I've been working in HR management. Um, I have a degree in business management with a minor in Human resources management, and I'm really excited to be here. Um, I've never worked in the library before, but my wife is a librarian. She's been doing library work for 10 years. So I've heard many, many stories. <laughs> good, and so I've had another one. Oh, good. Okay. So I'm really excited to be here. So, this begs the question please tell us. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> England. Uh, Scottish grammar. Sorry, they need to be politically. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm not getting that. Just remember, you can't ask that in the board in the interview. Yes. <laughs> and we've learned that there are many connections here, probably some I'm not even aware of yet. But of course, 
you know, David comes from Bartlett Library, which is where I spent the first 20 some years of my career. So he is familiar with some of my former coworkers. And we have found that Ian has actually worked with Paul's uncle at one time. Wow. Yeah, he has to be my manager 14 years ago. <laughs> he has also worked with one of our own employees in another uh, venue. So it, it is truly a small world. Mm -hmm. well, you should also know that I became began my love of library and maybe addiction to libraries at a very young age at McHenry Public Library. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have to find one for you. <laughs> all right. So thank you all for being here. You are more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Or if you choose, you may leave. We will not hold it against you at all. So we will totally your option. And just think, option. assume you won't be the new kids on the block. Right. That may be boring for me. You probably will. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll have you stay tonight. Okay. You can listen okay. in to what happens. Sure. So, please, let's all mention you. So, yes. Lovely to meet you all. Thanks. 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 Welcome. Welcome. All right. So, Martha, are you ready? I am oh, ready. Awesome. Okay. There she is. So, I'll introduce Martha since she is a new face for all of you. Martha has been working on our accounts when it comes time for our audit. For how long, Martha? Oh my gosh, uh, probably, probably for 10 years or so. Yeah, so she's been here for a while. So this is her first time presenting the audit to the board. Uh, we gave them the option to do a coin toss with Martha and Brian. So Martha, I think you won. I don't know. <laughs> so we're glad you're here. So I think everybody has a copy of the audit that you can follow along. All right, yes. so I will turn it over to you, Martha. Thanks for joining us. Okay, and I will share my screen to, uh, I guess I oh, won't share my screen. Let me see, I can give you permissions, I'm sorry. I think I can give you permission. Hey, Paul. Yes. <laughs> I can make her co-host. Hey, co yeah. Okay, let's see, does that allow you to share your screen? Maybe. Yes. Oh, great. Okay. Maybe. Has that come up for you? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, well, thank you all for having me with you tonight uh, virtually. My one and a half year old will really appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry if there's any crying in the background. <laughs> um, so as Sandy mentioned, I've been on the district's audit for uh, my entire career at Sickich, and in this past year, I've uh, co-partnered the audit engagement with Brian. Brian had another commitment tonight, so I was able to uh, come on to present the audit, uh, re the results of the audit for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2022. I do really appreciate um, First and foremost, all of the support and assistance that's provided to us and our to, to our team throughout the entire audit engagement. I want to highlight that uh, the staff at the district is extremely professional, very organized, very detailed, and has and always allows us to complete the audit on a on a very timely basis um, with very minimal back and forth and just the level of preparation and professionalism is uh, should be recognized and noted. So I want to extend our appreciation to the staff uh, and the accounting team for that assistance. Um, so what you have hopefully had a chance to review and if not, I will be going into detail with you tonight on uh, the two of the reports that we issue as part of the audit engagement. So that's the annual financial report, and then I'll briefly touch on the board communication as well. Um, in addition to those two reports, we also assist with the preparation and submission of the annual filing to the state comptroller. I won't be covering that uh, with you tonight. That's just submitted to the comptroller. It's an annual required filing, and that has been submitted. Mm -hmm. So, um, I will begin my presentation tonight going through the annual financial report and just highlighting some key 
key areas to help you in your review of the report and to highlight the results of the audit engagement. So in the annual financial report, uh, in the introductory section, beginning on page number MDNA1 and through page MDNA10, this is a section of the report called the management's discussion and analysis. And this is prepared by the district staff and it provides a very, uh, it's an executive summary of the financial statements. It provides a great deal of context and analysis to the balances. It provides some comparative information. So it uh, goes beyond what's included in the basic financial statements and the supplemental schedules themselves uh, to give you a little bit more detail and analysis, and it's very well written and a great summary. So I will say if you read nothing else in the report, um, I would highly recommend reading the management discussion and analysis as it does uh, provide a great highlight and summary and context to the balances themselves. So moving past the management discussion and analysis, I'll uh, just jump right into where you can find the independent auditor's report. Uh, so many people, when they read an audit or audited financial statements, this is what they're looking for is the independent auditor's opinion. Um, the independent auditor's report is found on pages one through four. Uh, one thing you may note from prior years, there has been a change to the layout of what is in the independent auditor's report. Uh, the information is still the same, but you will now find the opinion of on the very first page of the independent auditor's report, whereas in past years it was on the second page. So here, um, the first two paragraphs labeled opinion, uh, I am pleased, on, on behalf of Sikich, I am pleased to be able to present to you a clean, unmodified opinion on the district's financial statements. Uh, that is the highest level of assurance that we can provide. So uh, what that says is that based on our audit procedures, which we completed in accordance with uh, GAS or generally accepted auditing standards, we were able to provide the highest level of assurance on the financial statements. So job well done. Also in the independent auditor's report, there are sec sections as in the past uh, that discuss management's responsibility over the financial statements and describe the auditor's responsibilities as related to under the uh, GAS standards that we perform the audit. Following the independent auditor's report, uh, there are two statements, the statement of net position and statement of activities that are on pages five and six of the report. These are presented to you on a modified cash basis of accounting and are consolidated, uh, present the district's balances in total. So for all of the district's funds. What these balances include that are not included in your, the reports that you receive on a month to month basis are the some of the long-term assets and long-term liabilities of the district. So uh, within the assets balance, in addition to cash and investments, you'll find capital assets net of, net of the accumulated depreciation on those assets. And within the liabilities balance, you'll also find uh, the long-term liabilities of the, li the library district related to uh, the, the outstanding debt payable. So those are not typically included in your month-to-month -month in uh, financial statements that are reviewed on a uh, budget versus actual basis. On the statement of activities, you'll find uh, a change in net position. And I uh, wanted to point out actually the change in net position, the district's net position from prior year changed very minimally, a small decrease of $265. And that change uh, relates uh, largely to the depreciation, uh, the uh, capital assets and pay down of debt of the district. So there are uh, schedules with the following these pages that show how uh, that $265 balance came to be. Following those two schedules are where you can find the governmental funds uh, statement of assets, liabilities, deferred inflows of resources and fund balances, 
and then also the schedule of uh, the statement of changes in fund balance is following here. Uh, that's on pages seven and page nine. These statements, you'll find the general fund and special reserve fund presented individually. Those are the district's major funds. And then a column for the remaining funds of the district, which are considered non-major funds. Those are reported here in aggregate. And later on in the report, you'll find additional statements and schedules, which break down how that non-major governmental funds balance uh, is allocated to the different funds that are reported here and also budget first actual schedules for each of the district's funds. Just a few items to highlight here. The general fund, you'll see the unassigned fund balance of the general fund on June 30th, 2022 was a balance of 819,883. That's available for the district's uh, subsequent operations. So to fund the subsequent fiscal year. And the special reserve fund had a committed fund balance. Uh, the fund balance is committed in the special reserve fund for those purposes of 460,198. On page nine of the report, you'll see uh, the general fund had a increase in fund balance prior to transfers out. So uh, the increase in fund balance of 243,564 and, and made transfers to the special reserve fund, which resulted in that uh, reduction of 56,436 to that to the general funds fund balance at June 30th, 2022. And the special reserve fund had a decrease of 27,090 for the fiscal year, adding in that transfer in from the general fund had an increase to its fund balance of 272,910 for the year. Following the, those statements, uh, you'll find footnotes to the financial statements. I'm not going to go into detail on the footnotes to the financial statements, just uh, highlight that within the footnotes, you'll find information on the district's significant accounting policies, there are footnotes which present the district's capital asset activity for the fiscal year, as well as long-term debt balances and discussion of I the district's IMRF and OPEB plan. Uh, because the district's financials are reported on a modified cash basis, the balances of the IMRF and OPEB plan are not presented in the basic financial statements, but there are footnote disclosures which discuss uh, the obligations of the district re related, related to those plans. And then following the footnotes, um, which are relatively lengthy, uh, make up a good chunk of the report. There are uh, some budget versus actual schedules for the general fund. So if you're looking to see how the general fund performed as compared to the, the district's appropriation to the fund, as well as comparative to the prior year. There are schedules for the general fund and special reserve fund, which present those balances and that information. And then as I noted uh, briefly earlier, you'll find the combining non-major governmental funds here. So if you're looking to see that total balance that was presented in the beginning of the report, this is uh, the allocation of that balance to the funds that are presented. So these are the, those non-major governmental funds, the building equipment and maintenance, working cash, and then on the combining statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balances, the Alba Lemos gift fund, which was closed uh, at the end of June 30th, 2022. And then as I noted, for each of these non-major funds, there are also budget first actual schedules and comparative prior year information presented. Uh, within the annual financial report. And finally, supplemental information, which presents the uh, district's property tax assessed values, rates, extensions, and collections. So you see uh, for the tax levy year, so for 2021, the collections that were made through June 30th, and then the collections on the prior year uh, levies that were collected through cumulatively through June 30th, 2022. 
Uh, before I move on to briefly cover the board communication, is there are there any questions from the board as to the information presented in the annual financial report? Doesn't appear that anyone has any questions about that report. No. Nope. Okay. No. Thank you, Martha. Okay. And then the smaller of the two documents that you have in front of you, the board communication, uh, this is information within this report that we issue is required communication uh, to those charged with governance. So I'll just highlight uh, some of the key items within this report as well. Uh, there were no changes to accounting policies or and no GASB pronouncements that were implemented that impacted the district's report. So had there been any, we would note those uh, within the second paragraph here. So what you're looking at, the reports that you have in front of you, there have been no changes to the presentation or how certain balances were recorded as compared to the prior year's report. And we have uh, no significant estimates to disclose. Otherwise, we would know any significant estimates uh, within these paragraphs. Um, also, a couple other items to highlight on, this is on page three of this document. We had no difficulties that were encountered in performing our audit. As I noted at the start, uh, staff is very professional and provides us with all the information. Uh, we ask for quite a bit of information as part of our audit procedure, so we appreciate the patience and understanding in order for us to be able to complete our audit procedures. We had no disagreements with management. This would not be the first time you would hear of any had there been any, um, but we do like to and, and are required to report. There were no disagreements, no difficulties encountered in the audit. As for corrected and uncorrected misstatements, uh, there were three audit adjustments that were made as part of our audit procedures. Those are included in this packet as well. And those entries relate to uh, the long-term balances that are presented on that statement of net position and statement of activities, as well as recording of the transfer from the general fund to the special reserve fund. So the month to month activity that you see, we had no adjustments related to those uh, fund balances there. So what that says is that the information that you're provided on a monthly basis to make your decisions is accurate as the adjustments that we recorded as part of the, or we recommended and were recorded as part of the audit related to uh, specifically those transfers and that long-term activity that's presented on the statement of net position and statement of activities. And then finally, we include a management letter. Here is where we would note if we had any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies to disclose from our audit procedures. We had none to note. Uh, so we have a lengthy list of future accounting pronouncements, which largely will not impact the district. However, we always uh, discuss these with the staff and make sure that the board is informed of potential future accounting pronouncements that uh, as, as they come due to be implemented, we always review and ensure that they do or do not in fact have any implication on the district's reporting. And finally, an appendix which includes a comment that was presented in the prior year board communication with an update to the status of that comment. And just a note, there was one comment that, we, uh, that came up in the fiscal year 2021 audit that through our audit procedures in the 2022 audit, we were able to determine that this issue has been resolved and this is no longer considered a deficiency. So we have noted that this comment has been implemented uh, as of June 30th, 2022. And any questions on the board communication or any other information? I think so. I think we're good. Nobody has any questions about any of this? No? Thank you. 
All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Too. All right. I would just add to this that normally this is the time of year that after the audit is presented, the board would consider whether or not you want to transfer any money from our general operating fund into the special reserve fund. And my recommendation is that we don't do a transfer this year. Um, we did a fairly large transfer last year, that $300,000. Um, we do have funds that we could transfer, but I think in the coming years, you'll need that money in the general fund to pay some of the debt certificate um, payment. So my recommendation is not to transfer any of that money to the special reserve fund this year. Okay. Yeah. That's all. All right. Thank you. Um, we are moving on to the agenda. We just finished with presentations. And uh, we have any public comments? So I would like to do no correspondence this month. No correspondence this month. All right, so Secretary, if you could move on to the consent agenda. Sure. So item number A, approved minutes of the October 19th, 2022 regular board meeting. B, receive and file financial report for October. C, certify compliance with Truth and Taxation Act. D, adopt ordinance number 22-23-03, levy ordinance for fiscal year 2022 through 2023. Can I have a motion? I move that we accept the consent agenda as read by the secretary. Second. 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 All right, so the motion was made by San, uh, Trustee Lazan and seconded by Trustee Warren. And we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Richardson. Aye. Trustee Stowe. Aye. Trustee Pika. Aye. Trustee Warren. Aye. Trustee Lazan. Aye. Trustee Director votes aye. <clears throat> the consent agenda is approved. I have one question, please. Uh, Sandy, equipment maintenance would use sixty percent of the budget. Is there a specific reason that may have caused that? Let me find it. I don't In know. the general fund, is it expenses? Um, yes. So that expense line covers. The maintenance fees for our copy machine. Okay. And for the first several months, we were on an old lease, and our new lease, um, the maintenance is covered in the lease payment. So we expect that line, the expenditures for the remainder of the year, to be less than they were at the start of the fiscal year. It I should level out. Yeah. It should level out as we move forward. Okay. I was just concerned maybe mm -hmm. three months that we were at yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Moving on to the regular agenda, we're on page 24. Uh, if I could have a motion, please. I move that we pay invoices in the amount of $195,661.50 for the period of October 20th, 2022 through November 16th, 2022, including electronic payments and checks numbers 9092 through 9134. Okay. All right, motion was made by Trustee Stahl and seconded by Trustee Warren. And we'll do another roll call. Uh, Trustee Lazan? Aye. Trustee Warren? Aye. Trustee Pika? Aye. Trustee Stahl? Aye. Trustee Richardson? Aye. Trustee Grocer votes aye. And that uh, motion passes. All right, see so, uh, LinkedIn Corporation, is that a thing used by the public? Is that an application? An online service. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, moving on to transfer funds. I move that we transfer $250,000 from the commercial checking account to the operating account, checking account. I second. Brady, thank you. Good. All right. Motion was made by Trustee Pika and seconded by Trustee Stull. Uh, Trustee Pika. Aye. Uh, Trustee Stull. Aye. Trustee Richardson? Aye. Trustee Warren? Aye. Trustee Lazan? Aye. Trustee Grocer votes aye. Motion carries. All right, now we are moving to unfinished business. Uh, we don't really have anything further to um, discuss 
with the executive director search. Get that all taken care of. So we're going to move on to new business on page 28. Discuss this hard work. So um, so this uh, piece of artwork here is being um, acquired by the Tourism and Arts Council, and they're looking for a place for it to live. And so they are just in the beginning stages of this, and I'm not sure that it'll be uh, landing here, but if they would like to do that. And first, is there anyone who's feeling strongly that it should live? Anyone feeling strongly it should not live here? Okay, you're well, fine thing to have this. I think it would take a question. I noticed liability was one of the items we have to discuss. Who insures this? We don't know. Um, so they just approached us to see if the library would be interested in having a piece like this displayed at the library. And please refresh my memory. Uh, we don't have a pedestal that will accommodate this that would get to be purchased or a case. Not, there, there are possibilities here for display. My recommendation, because there are a couple of reasons, any artwork such as this that is accepted for display into the library according to our policies has to be approved by the Board of Trustees. So right. this is one of those situations that the responsibility falls to the trustees. Um, and the second piece of this is because I will be the party and I don't think that a resolution to this will be made before I leave. There are budgetary um, pieces involving the city council, et cetera. Um, so my recommendation, and then, then I guess I mentioned the location where the piece is going to be displayed, the liability, who's responsible with costs for the cost if we do need to have a pedestal. So there's like square um, shelving units that when you walk in the library, it's very possible that it could be set up to display on top of one of those units yeah. if that's an appropriate location. There would be consultants in involved. I would suspect, you know, in any case, at the end of this, there needs to be some kind of a formal agreement between the library and the city as to who owns this piece, what the disposition is, if the library chooses not to display it any longer, who's responsible for liability, installation costs, maintenance costs, et cetera. So my recommendation is that the Board, if first the board comes to a consensus of yes, we're interested in learning more about this opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's not a commitment to saying we're going to have this piece in the library. Um, but if the board could come to a consensus that you want to explore the possibility, that's one step tonight, I think, to decide. And the second step, my recommendation would be to appoint one of the trustees mm -hmm. to be the liaison to this committee um, to discuss this. And if necessary in the future, I didn't include it here, but we do have the city library task force. And if needed, there could be a meeting of that task force at some point to hash out the details of that memorandum of understanding or intergovernmental agreement. So if I think tonight the board would need to decide, you know, is this appropriate, something you'd be interested in discussing, and two, who would be the, the board's, you know, liaison to this group. Yeah, because I mean, not only the liability, but like you could say how long, you know, like right. who's going to be responsible for, say, cleaning it or maintaining it, you know, because again, if say our cleaning crew comes in and, you know, again, if damage occurs and or is this going to be rotated and say every time maybe they're going to make a change in what's displayed, how much say do we get to have over it if it's not, say, I don't want to say library's mission statement or whatever, but if it's something that we don't feel is appropriate. So I think that this is a one piece installation. It will not be rotated. <clears throat> um, so the Tourism and Arts Commission has kind of been given the responsibility of overseeing a public art installation program in the city. Um, so the pieces that I am aware of that they have already installed there's a squirrel and some acorns. 
over in Leon Schmidt Heritage Park, which is over by the Warren Tavern and the History Museum. Um, that's one piece. And there's also a sculpture at the police station. Uh, those are the two pieces that I'm aware of. There may be more that I can't think of right now, but this would be a third piece. And the city would purchase this piece outright. Um, and they're just looking at something that has to be um, displayed at an indoor location. And they're trying to find a location that's appropriate where many people from the community um, would be able to visit and appreciate it. This is one of those places that we get a lot of foot traffic, unlike City Hall. Maybe people go there to pay their water bills, but I don't even think that's how much happens mm -hmm. anymore. Right. Unless they go to a city council in the upper lobby. Right. First. Yeah. Right. But even those, you know, are not as well attended maybe as they used to be. So. Isn't so there a there. place over behind the, or on top of, alongside whatever that uh, rear staircase? I thought there was a ledge on there. There is a ledge there, um, but we haven't gotten into really where this would be displayed. I think there are some people on the commission as well as other resources. I know Sarah Phelan, who is the curator at the museum here, was very involved in this exhibit at Cantini. She's probably somebody who could come and walk through and see what's appropriate. My concern, that was actually the first space that came to mind because it's out of um, an area where little hands can get at it, less likely to bump, be bumped into, knocked over. However, if you, the majority of people who visit our facility come in through this entrance, mm -hmm. it would be out of the sight line. There'd be very few people who would see it. I also feel it's pretty strongly that it would detract from the mobile that's hanging above it. Mm -hmm. um, but those would be things that would have to be worked through. With whoever is, um, but they don't even have this with them. Pardon me? They don't, they haven't even secured this with them. No, they have not. No, they're just looking for places that might be right. suitable for right. display. Right. So we're discussing our interest in them. So exactly. <laughs> exactly. So this, uh, this piece mm -hmm. is the same um, set of pieces that they had outdoors at Kennedy, am I correct? Some this of the was, pieces were outdoor. This was inside the division. Inside. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. it's the same yeah. artist who did all those pieces. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really don't know very much about this art. It could be, it, I believe it was a group of artists. I'm not okay. entirely certain, but it, there were a lot of pieces. So they were really, I, think they came from I never saw areas. them in New York. I didn't know there were either. They were just fascinating, and I love the idea of. Uh, Having a piece in Warrenville someplace that's permanent, uh, because that was a temporary exhibit there. Right? Yeah, and I, I just they're, they're they were so dynamic. They were really wonderful pieces. So I, I love the idea. Um, I would be interested in having a further conversation with Monica about it, uh, or on behalf of the library. But um, I uh, am wondering if there's anybody who would be wanting to be the liaison with the city about this. Yeah, I think you'd be fun. Okay, all right. Well, no reason why you both can't do it together. So. Can we get the kid too? The kid? Well, <laughs> somebody in the yeah. picture. Oh, I saw you. Oh, yeah, that's right, the other picture. No, I don't think the kid comes with the art. No. Yeah, so. Um, good public education of other. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the, I, I, I think that it's a wonderful opportunity and I'm sure if they decided on this displaying it here that we can find a suitable way to do it. But we do have these other considerations and one of them being each donation if accepted. Uh, I don't know, say, so, what did it say becomes ours? Did it say that? Under the general guidelines on page 28. Yeah. Really yeah. However, yeah. This is where the memorandum of understanding or intergovernmental agreement comes into place because I don't believe it would be a donation to the library. Right. I suspect that the city would say, would we take it on loan. Yes, okay. that's what you would work out. Maybe right. you would commit, and again, this is just a general discussion of whether we're interested in these details we work through later, but the possibilities are you get agreement says that the library will display it here for a period of three years. And after that, 
there would be another discussion. Do we want to continue to display it? Do we want to return it to the city? You know, what happens to it if at some point the library decides it doesn't fit our space? What happens to it if we decide to renovate mm -hmm. and that we no longer have a place for it? But those are the things that we have to be worked for. And honestly, I don't even think that this commission is to the point to discuss those details either. They're still kind of in an exploratory mode. But so will you respond back to Monica? And yes. let her know that we've got to uh, so the board is interested in pursuing a discussion. Yes. Discussion, and that we've got two people who will be liaisons okay. to the discussion. And or if they want to come and make some kind of a I mean, I don't think they're at a point where they're ready to make a formal presentation. No. Because they haven't even acquired. So right. Okay, so I will copy both Jill and Rick on that email I sent to Monica if she has their contact information. Great. Great, great, great. Thank you so much. Okay. Rick and Jill. All right. I love this little picture of the kid with the five face. face. <laughs> yes, that is um Stephanie Cook's granddaughter. Uh, she said that was their favorite piece from the entire it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, good. We're going to move on to the director's report. And the first thing of that was the staffing update with our fabulous new staff. I feel like I should burst out the song again. Yeah. Um, and uh, is there anything else from here that you want to? The only other oh. thing is our, our newest um, employee, Kathy Crown, who was a shelver, oh. resigned, submitted her effective immediate resignation and has gone back to work at the Old Fork Public Library. And then Sarah Kratz. Well, I think last month I reported she resigned. So we received three applications as of November 10th. We have another one in the um, came into my email box. So Ian and Lori and I will be reviewing those applications and moving towards getting that position filled. And what then did you Sarah week, do again? I'm Sarah was at the member services okay. desk. Okay. And yeah, she went back to be a full-time student. So focusing on that. Um, the only other thing in my report I think that I really need to touch on tonight is that one of our former employees who was employed here for 18 years, long time. Richard Deere, um, passed away in late October, and his family very kindly asked that memorial be directed to the library. Oh, so, so that was very thoughtful. Um, have any, have any, have any, have any, one uh, contribution so far. His memorial service was just this past Saturday. So yes. Um, that is it. And next month, um, our managers are going to be we're going to be meeting to review those standards for Illinois Public Libraries. Do you remember that one? Um my last one will be very simple and we're just going to bring you the per capita grant application next month. I want to have to review you trust us to do that. Um, that, that really is everything I have for this month's report and my report. Great. All right. Uh, Nothing had reports. Is there anything from the reports that uh, the board wants to ask any department heads or make any comments on? Oh, Terry. Yes. Uh, who's, who did you tell me about tech services IT assistance? Is that? I don't recognize that particular position. That's Duncan. Duncan. Oh, there is his title. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That was all. Mm -hmm. And then um, this is in Kathy's report. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Rogers, what does she she's presenting? Was she on the active shooter thing? And no, Michelle Rogers was on um, our uh uh oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> It says responded to presenter okay. Michelle Rogers. Yes, yeah, I apologize. I'm sorry, that's Michelle Peterson. Peterson was here. My, my, I apologize. Okay, so she was here as part of our um, staff training day. No, she did, she was not active shooter. She was um, okay. our. Uh, uh, presenter on uh, customer service. Oh, okay. And she had asked uh, through Paul, Paul pushed out to everybody uh, if we had, you know, she asked a few simple questions and uh, well, that makes more sense because I thought she was part of the extra shooter. I mean, she has had a question. 
Maybe she has to present her. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm done, Barbara. Well, I've always appreciated the um, very high level of customer service that our our staff is always given to our members. So um, I'm actually kind of surprised we had someone come and talk to you about it because I feel like you're doing a great job. <laughs> but you can always call on those skills, that's for sure. Um, all right, any other comments about uh, the department head reports? Nope, okay. Yeah. Lots of pretty pictures. Um, once again, it's report, that's me. Well, just changed because next next month we're gonna have probably a six o'clock meeting. I think we are having this. We're determining you will be here on time. <laughs> well, I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> so and that meeting again is the 14th, 14th. and the 21st. That was yeah. a, right. That was an error on my part. The 21st, I could make it six o'clock with no problem. <laughs> it's the 14th. Yes, 14th. All right. And um yep, that's really it for me. Secretary, you have anything to report? Oh, well, treasurer. We oh, the treasurer. treasurer, sorry. That's, that's the important report. one. Yeah. The um this month we made our um interest and principal payment. For our loan, and we only have seven more years to go. Oh, wow, really? That's kind of surprising because yeah. it's gone really fast. Time is flying by. Having a good time. Yep. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? Um, secretary? Secretary, everything looks great. So, Jeff was looking a little good. Great. All right. Um, Dr. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have any committee meetings. Any, any trustee comments? Anybody? No. All right. I think we're at our final uh, destination here. My friends, <laughs> who would like to give us our I move that we adjourn. Second. Oh, all right, the uh, motion was made to return by Trustee Stull and seconded by Trustee Lazan and Trustee Warren. Can we pick two? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. At 8.02 p.m.